mission of Making Pearls is include me in your diversity. The goal of the project is to evolve a community of performance poets into agents for their art form and its potential to be a catalyst for positive change for a healthier diversity among its audiences. The poet's work can help each of us find common ground or the need to create new ground. I, we get the man in the moon sometimes, see, we grew up together. That old man is just like my brother, it's so sad to see him blue. The new era has begun, can you guess my name? I am not a preacher, but I do exchange notes with the Holy One. He favors my ideas for the future. He did like my idea to color in the sun. And he has some schemes at hand, a plan for everyone, at least that's what some say. See, I just helped with the details. Knew that seventh day he was resting. I was working a 24 hour shift to clean up that mess he made. Back before overtime was counted, I learned my lesson. My next idea was to color in the union label. I am not a teacher, but I answer questions well. I'll show you how to question everything, like the red apple. Poor Adam. But see, I am not a teacher who says that I have the right message to give on how to live your life. I am not a prophet, but I do see the future. The days coming are not so bright, so be careful and do what is truly right for your inner child. But hey, I am not a prophet, but I will warn you of one thing. Nobody knows when the final blow will strike. So follow your own yellow brick path. I am not an astronomer, but I do look to the stars for guidance, not science, just reliance, because I know they will always be there, like any true friend. But you see, I am not an astronomer, some people follow stars, but I've been known to skip a few. I just look to the stars for guidance, consider wishing upon a star sometime, even the ones that fall to the sea. I am not a believer, but I do pray that I'll have a coat like Joseph someday. But you see, I don't want it like some false idol, no hopes there. See, I know I once was one, but I was melted down. So you see, I am not a believer. Too many false idols in this here world. See, I'm just praying for my colorful coat. No, I am not a mistake. I was born for a reason, with a mission and a season. It will keep going, a fire burning through me which says, no, I am not a mistake. I am winning lottery tickets, and I'll have my chance to cash in. But everybody's got an opinion. You may even think God is writing the story around here. Who knows, you may be right, but I am the one telling it. No, I am not white, and how could I be? There seems to be too much rhythm in me. In heaven, there are no races, no division. Something me and God are working off the world, but it will take time. Ah, heaven is a nice place, they say. God might even let me in one day when my job is done. See, he promised he will show me the way, but see, I am not white. Though my skin may lie, how could I be? I've been resurrected so many times, I barely exist. It's hard to find my soul in the midst, but it's there, and it's not white. I am all the colors of the world put into one hell until a blood test. God thought I was his son. He named me Skittles for all the colors of the rainbow. Because of my birth between the never ending rain shower and the yellow sunshine. That was my true moment of color. Even Noah took it as a sign of peace to come. The new era has begun. I wink at the man in the moon sometimes. See, we grew up together. It's so damn sad to see him blue. Do not worry, my friend. The world will not come to an end. No more black and white. Skittles is coloring the world. And see, I intend to make things right. Yeah, let me say that blank stares may abound as round as zeros rise in the eyes of misunderstanding. Therefore, I feel most comfortable speaking in tongues. I wake up yesterday and I need some space. You know, it's one of those mornings when you need some room to move. So I call out of work, jump in the shower, get dressed, and boogie down out of my apartment building to the street. Yeah, the street, this is a city, you know, cement, glass, and glitter. Anyway, I'm walking along the sidewalk, and on the pavement, I see six cigarettes, fresh, unsmoked cigarettes, set meticulously side by side. Next to the cigarettes are two quarters. One of the quarters is leaned up against the gray marble wall. I look around. No one in sight. Hey, this is the city. <laughs> a block farther, I meet a homeless woman living in a box. Seems like a nice enough person, so I tell her about the two quarters. I figure she can make up her own mind about the cigarettes. Off I go across the square and take a shortcut through the park where the grass is glowing like liquid green fire. There are crocus and daffodils around the marble statue fountain. Big buds on the trees. It's blustery but beautiful. It's May, spring, and that puts a kick in my step. So I'm crossing the avenue and a taxi driver lays on the horn because I didn't wait for the light. I stop, look right at him, and yell, drop dead. He leans out of his window and yells, no, you drop dead. I can get a charge out of that guy's pumping up their chests. Anyway, I climb the cement hill to the bus station, and behind the ticket counter is a brown-eyed goddess with black curls and a personality like a water cooler filled with laughter. 
you know, one of those refreshing people. <laughs> so I buy my ticket aboard the bus. It's crowded. Mothers with kids, businessmen, soldiers, sailors, a few grandmothers, and some young people. The kind of a crowd you can study while the bus cruises through the city. But then my attention is drawn outward, and I watch the windows as we roll through the train yards. And I'm reminded that my father, my grandfather, and my great grandfather were all railroad men. And I think of my mother and her people, how they immigrated down from French Canada and over from England, and all the struggle and hard work that brought me here. <laughs> so, we get into the suburbs. so we get into the suburbs, which is nothing more than a collection of tiny colored boxes with a few trees and <coughs> flowers and people walking dogs. And I think to myself, hey, 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 people really do look like their pets. Everyone here looks like they're spayed tutor. <laughs> <laughs> well, we roll the ways down the highway and finally we get to the coast and that's where I get off. Because if you need to breathe, if you need some elbow room, if you need to know there's still enough space for everyone, get down to the sea. The happiness diamond sunlight glitters on the hard blue swells. Those careen on the wind. Crisp salt air and out there on the horizon, the blue, blue edge. Well, I haven't had anything to eat yet, so I find a vendor. Turns out to be a guy from Corsica, and that's interesting. So we talk a little while I finish a couple of hot dogs and a soft drink. Then I say goodbye, stroll down to the beach, take off my shoes and walk for miles and miles and miles on the warm sand. And I'm not thinking of a thing up ahead. I'm not looking back. I'm just there. Like this, huh? Put out the case now. <laughs> I get home that night and I'm tired, so I go to bed and close my eyes and I think to myself, well, that was a good day. Not special, I mean, nothing spectacular, but most days are like that. Spoken word artists, they might not even say that they are poets. I, personally, I say, don't call me no poet. This ain't no love song. See, Mama taught me that prayer changes things, so I'm praying for enough steel to keep it real. Because death is the only way out of here, but we'd be scared to leave our bodies. This body's been kicked around long enough, it wasn't supposed to last forever, and my soul cries out to be free. Besides, the only thing constant is change. So I'm sitting, meditating on the one, when a b-boy in his boombox scared my spirit guides away, and I'm lost in a rat race trying to buy shit my TV says I need to survive. And I'm struggling for freedom, but I can't define it anymore, so I'm on a vision quest trying to find a way out of this mess. I'm walking through the park, talking to the trees. They got a protest going on against giving up their lives for cashmas, and the local snowmakers union won't cross the picket line until Santa kicks in with some kickback. So it's 75 degrees in New York in December, and it seems like the whole damn universe is under attack by the greedy as they plunder the world, exploiting the needy. So I'm rolling seven onks deep in mysticism. I meditated till the lights went out, but Con Ed wasn't hearing it. Not even an ohm could cut the darkness. So I'm burning seven candles trying to find the light of God inside, but she's busy down at the Salvation Army healing a bell ringer who was shot by a 10-year-old white kid with a Tech 9 from Oregon. Seems like faith was raped of her charity and everything seems hopeless. So I'm hanging out in poetry circles trying to find the truth. But all I get is soft porn stroking my ego to erection with no satisfaction. Too many poets saying nothing well, but I'm looking for substance. Something I can take home. There's not enough meat to fill a doggy bag, so I stick to vegetarianism like a religion trying to ward off starvation. I'm chanting for peace and justice, but Kevin Banks was murdered by the new weapon of choice. A killer cop's two-way radio to the head killed him dead. No backup needed, no caution heated, and I'm praying for Buddha. He's Laying face down, spread eagle on the concrete, jacked up by 5-0 on the corner of 112th Street. And it seems like the interest on karmic debt is hired in bail, so I guess he'll spend cashmas in jail. The herb spot's been shut down to improve the quality of life for street corner pharmaceuticals who offer death at half the price, while the last legal drug dealer's local watering holes like the newsroom in the Bronx offer three for one shots so or rot gut watered down except the poets like me who are banned for using the n-word because the owner is a nigger but alcoholism kills your liver first and it's easy to collect from the taxes of the dead so i scream out all the obscenities instead like poverty and ignorance plus imperialism equals fascism but justice turns a deaf ear to my fears so i'm looking for a detox for jesus addiction but the offering plate gets in the way because organized religion is big business, but nobody tells the poor as they pay and pray for more salvation from this hell we be living in. So, hail Mary, full of gold, the Vatican's been bought and sold. We had homes and jobs before they brought us here. My ancestors built pyramids for years before picking cotton. Maybe that's been forgotten. Now I'm quoting Haki Matabuti saying, 
Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Green stamps, but green stamps are obsolete, and the poor and the homeless beg for food to eat in this land of plenty when not a damn thing is free. So don't call me a poet, because me, I'm just a pissed off brother with a pen. Wanting to be, not to be something for everyone else. Feeling in shyness the pressure of his father's name, the name of a hero, the hero of a nation, a nation struggling with its own identity. He as himself, being a man of his own nature, Martin Luther King III, mediating rather than marching, persuading rather than protesting, confronting the battlefronts of his generation, a generation with laws and opportunities on the side of justice, being his best, his vision of himself, wanting not to fill the shoes of his father, knowing those shoes would not fit his world anyhow, needing to be his own man, not the continuation of a legacy rooted in the civil disobedience of his father's vision of justice for all. Young black children play in the cotton fields of the city, selling that nitty gritty to people acting silly. Poor men come from the slums, buys for a hundred and fifty of hard earned money, standing on the cold corner begging for pennies. Has a name, but is hidden in his own shadow, searching for recognition. We all call him a nobody who used to be a somebody, but still a somebody in God's eye. Drinks in dirty water fountains while we sit in fancy restaurants with the no bum allow sign on the front door, knowing where I'm coming from. House slave nigga sits in the mayor's office, uh, elected by his own people, who has not neglected, so we rejected. I saw Cain kill Abel on the sidewalk. Samson couldn't get a job till his locks were cut off. Young black children played the cop fields of the city, selling that nitty gritty to people acting silly. Mumia Abu Jamal sentenced to crucifixion while our tax money supports the state's drug addiction. Time for a revolution, that is what I'm inflicting because the law is contradicting. Martin Luther King once said, let freedom ring, but unfortunately, bells are broken. Guess they played us like a silent token, words unspoken, tongue locked in bondage, words kept in hostages. Devils in blue suits and metal black sticks, called the nightsticks, cold-blooded hound savages who hide behind rusted badges. Call themselves heroes for killing innocent, righteous Negroes, descendants of the anti-slave, pro-black nigga with the bald up fist and the afro saying, power to the people, as I say, let Momia free, let them free, let them free. I say, let Momia free, let them free, let them free. Our children now sings Amazing Grace in the cotton fields of the city. Times are getting weary. Knowledge hits the third eye of a bandit light. Keys unleashing the shackles of the brains of an African. Tears of a tormented thug burns like alcohol damp. Cutin stuffed in the holes of penis tips. Makes him don't want to play no more, play no more, play no more. Too old to play in the cotton fields now. Listening to whispered echoes in the brick walls of the ghetto. Saying, let go of the ghetto gaze, ghetto shame now. Taking back self-determination to stop the deterioration of a black nation. Our nation, the new nation. Give the poor man from the slums a place to stay, food to eat, shoes to put on his feet, then elect him president. Let Abel be able to live, to save your life, have a kid and a wife, be successful, get sense in the job, and Momia will be a free man, and freedom can ring again, ring again, and our future black children can play again, play again, play again. Our future black children can play again, play again, play again. Thank you. I am a white man. Eyes glowing green with cultural envy, I have no anthem to sing. And I can see you as you can see me, as you seem to know me, so I be. So I be, begin with the color of my skin. Because extremism is a luxury bought by those with expensive taste but poor understanding. Quickly swallowing half-truths because whole meals take too long to digest. While offering lit balls as charity to empty stomachs growling reality. Generalization is quicksand. Kickstands are sinking rapidly. No atrocity is concrete except what I have done. Because I resemble that cop that kicked you in the head. I came at you while I raped you after blinded on our date. I lied to you after I deprived you opportunities. I gave away to keep control of the class. 
class I am the head of. I fed insanity, LSD, and narcotics. I am R.J. Reynolds, a cancerous H.G. Wells selling you a science fiction that sells diction in voice boxes tied with bows of oxygen tubes I used to murder my father, the mad doctor on the mountaintop. I forged my green card to Atlantis. Smith and Wesson are my cousins. John Colt is my alias. Uranus is mine. I own the moon. I am the son of the sun hiding in the shadows, revising history, resurrecting God in my own image. I have no anthem to sing, and I burn the proof in old paintings for light as I redrew Christ from photo reference negative, changing black to white, a color that pleased us. Who was the model for our Savior Jesus? I forget, but he looked nothing like me, but he was me, because you and I are me, except I chopped down the trees of slavery, then sat on the boards to make prisons, used the surplus for high-backed Virginian electric chairs, presented them to every new king rising, ignored the cries of color, muttered discrimination. Let incrimination be heard as cause, because I am not a normal man. I have no anthem. The deeds of generations weigh me down. I'm a guilt machine, flogging myself with unseen whips of remembrance of everything I've done, slipping through life on the slick my ancestors spilled, greasing the system for their children. I am that baby on board who saw the potential I did not earn. Now I'm a tourist in my own town, a bearer at my own funeral, walking below this provident skyline trying to figure out how to undo everything I've done to the world throughout time, so cut me down. My atrocities go farther back than you can imagine, because I own the sins of the father, of my father's forefathers and their forefathers, and fathers that go farther back than that. So cut me down. The sins of a millennium are resting above the blade of my left shoulder, raised because my right arm cradles my daughter, yet to be born. Someone I will teach, just as I have been taught everything my father has done. Cut me down, then explain to her why I had no anthem to sing. Your revolution does not include me. I fled my church around age seven, already believing from the priest sermons I would never make it into his heaven. Embryonic years of faith, my only oxygen. Faith became the obstacle in front of my optical in order to keep me grounded. In order to survive, to be alive, I thought I had to shut my eyes and blind faith walk aimlessly. Never shed a tear in fear a passerby might notice me. A park bench, my refuge. Me, a refugee, huddled in a ball as small as I could be, trying to disappear from God's eye. At age five, I stood up in front of my parish, declared my love for the Creator, exclaimed God had called me, told me to breathe, breathe every breath, breathe every breath, three breaths deep into my lungs before releasing air back into the world. Faith was my oxygen, the Lord, my wind song. Every time I felt pain, I believed it was a test. Every time I survived, one step further on my quest. Every time I bled, one more badge to wear with pride. Every time I smiled, one more time that I had lied. My faith began to weaken, failed me, looking for God's beacon, hung from the stars in the sky, dreaming of streets paved with gold, and opportunities of hope reborn. I got a twinkle in my eye, envisioning rivers overflowing with a current of words that no one could control, believing if I could pour out my soul into my beliefs of corner stores that sold literature, preaching about the glory of life and not selling death at half the price, then maybe things could change. Maybe we could rearrange what we have turned our world to be if we could learn to breathe like God taught me, breathing every breath, breathing Breathing every breath, three breaths deep into our lungs before releasing air back into the world. Then maybe we could come to understand all the mistakes that we have made. I still muse the idea of heaven's entrance being priceless pearly white gates were inside poets, prophets, sages, and blind seers rule the fates. How baby eyes did see, want a sanctuary, a white picket fence where inside things aren't as scary as they are from this park bench where I can see our urban hell. Is this how God meant things to be? All I know is I was born to defy all rules cast on me Threw off the shackles of theocracy Tiptoe barefoot on the stars with Jesus himself And proclaim I have repented all my sins And cried crimson tipped soul droplets Never asking why, but answering amen and alleluia As I read my picture bible by the flickering street lamplight Hiding underneath this park bench as small as I could be Trying to hide from all that God can see While I dreamt while I dreamt of my soul rising, of my soul rising and singing, of my soul rising and singing and touching, of my soul rising and singing and touching and screaming, Father! Where no man dares to dream. 
At age seven, I was ready to flatline just to be reborn, disperse my energy to all living things, and be immortalized as part of Mother Earth. But as I look back from the same park bench that hid me so many years before, I have only one conclusion drawn. I had to learn three breaths deep into my faith. God was with me all along. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O oh Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love in my heart, for I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself totally, to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. over upraised sticks, he establishes connection to the source. Two, three, four, down comes the lightning, and the jolt of the bolt electrifies the band. The audience responds, stomping feet, clapping hands, eyes ecstatic, hair on end. And the truth of their word, screamed so loud it can't be heard, is pounded forth and comprehended, echoed, answered, and augmented in the shouts of the enlightened from the first fibro nirvana, and the loud, loud, louder amplified reverberation that resanctifies creation. Revelation, revelation to the least poor nameless witness in the furthest, cheapest section. The ovation overwhelms the final notes, the musicians bowing low. The drummer sends his sticks, still smoking, whirling, arcing, singing, zinging, wheeling out where arms are waiting, wave on yearning, wave beseeching, till at last one hand, victorious, claims one sizzling brand, one glorious magic wand. Oh, most blessed of the faithful who will stand in solemn vigil two whole hours until he signs it, for his signature upon it guarantees its power to heal all the broken souls in torment who could not obtain a ticket, who may touch this holy relic and by virtue of its magic be restored, sustained, consoled, until they themselves behold revelation. In celebration of Fam Te Kim Fu, June 8, 1972, Vietnam. My eyes burn as I look at the photo, choking on the bitter smoke following her down the road. She has ripped the burning clothing from her body. Non qua, non qua. Too hot, too hot. At nine years old, she is not posing for the camera, smiling and playful. She is instead unthinkably exposed to the world, a stark reminder of the reality of war. Just moments before the button was pushed and the photo taken, the life she had known was irreversibly changed, as if it were the target of the napalm. And as she stumbles down the dusty road, arms open, face distorted with fear and pain and disbelief, she has no idea how many lives she is about to touch. He was 24, a soldier doing a soldier's job when he pushed the button to order the bombing. And at 49, her screams still find him. That image remains a part of him like jagged remnants of shrapnel lodged deeply into his heart. And always, the weight of his accountability keeps him down, skews his balance, his ability to stand tall. She is now 33, a young woman and mother. And rather than allowing her past and her pain to surround her, rather than letting the flames engulf her own children, 
or your children or my children. She instead places a wreath at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and says, if I could stand face to face with the pilot who dropped the bombs, I would tell him that we cannot change the past, but should do good things for the present and for the future to promote peace. And then, with the wall as their witness, he steps away from the crowd listening to her speak. And she, she opens her arms wider still and embraces him. Ten hua, ten hua. I forgive. I forgive. The saddest sound I ever heard was wheelchairs rolling. The war goes on in silence here while they're patrolling the halls. All the veterans seem to be trapped in purgatory. All the veterans come to be captured by their story. Can the doctor save these eyes that cannot see their glory? That as red-blooded American boys these old men say they saved. What is it that I am mourning? The war goes on in silence here while they're patrolling the halls. Does television tell it all his war just become numerical? I put on his boots, go back, look down the hall. The saddest sound I ever heard was his wheelchair rolling. The war went on another year right here in this veteran's hall. My daddy saw it all. His boots once covered with mud and blood, I now spit and shine. Are they mine? My daddy was a red-blooded American boy every morning. He was not a rolling, rolling stone. But one day he rolled away. Never came home. Rolled past his buddies down one long hall. Silent went his purple heart. Can the doctor save my eyes, take me from purgatory? There are no wheels on my chair. The war goes on inside me here. I stand in my daddy's boots, no purple in my red-blooded heart. Just my daddy's glory. The greatest fear I ever had to be in a wheelchair rolling. The war has gone into silence here, while night turns into morning. Stand tall. Child, child, listen up. Listen up. The most beautiful thing in this here world is you being yourself. My pappy taught me this truth. Pappy knows many things about fixing up and making things do what they are meant for. But like he says, fixing what was broken him was the key. I'm here to tell you that man was ugly to look at. But he was be you. Made in China, bought in the U.S. of A, parceled in the Midwest for the children in Rwanda, lined paper, crayons, assorted rainbow colors, rulers, uniting nations, number two pencils for a third world mission, and stickers bright stick-on rewards for the children from their teachers. Yellow, happy sun faces and turtles dressed for combat, boldly printed, have a nice day. My son, he's in public school. He takes stickers for granted. He asked me to buy them more crayons. I wondered, with such a process, would they melt in the back of a truck in the Rwandan sun, much like those he left in my car? I bought more crayons, wondering all the while, would some Rwandan child color a nice day? The future is bleak. They're firing the poets today all across the USA. The mission of Making Pearls is include me in your diversity. 
The goal of the project is to evolve a community of performance poets into agents for their art form and its potential to be a catalyst for positive change for a healthier diversity among its audiences. The poet's work can help each of us find common ground or the need to create new ground.